Also, yesterday, there were messages saying that our troops had managed to establish a position at the outskirts of Krasnogohorivka, which is a residential area west of Donetsk. Successful advancements are taking place in the plantations, and there's information suggesting that we've established ourselves in the farthest homes on the southeast of this residential area. Our attacks are continuing, like in the region of Nevelskoy, we're trying to push through the enemy's defense, and accordingly trying to create a front formation that'll allow us to push him out of this town, and by doing so we could further improve the situation for Donetsk from a shelling standpoint. Very active fighting with the use of aviation is also continuing in the region of Novomikhailovka. Our troops are attacking within the residential area itself. The enemy continues to try and push us out of the residential area of victory with counterattacks, even conducting counterattacks south of Novomikhailovka. Realizing that a very bad formation for his front is also being created here. Extremely fierce face-to-face -face battles continue here, the coal mine direction overall. Here our troops are carrying out short attacks to test the enemy's defenses and pull back his reserves. Unfortunately, so far unsuccessful, there's also a counter battle in the Rabatin area. There is very intensive processing of the position of artillery aviation. The enemy also, as I reported in the last episode, uses the tactics of active defense to expect that we very quickly break the enemy's defenses here. Well, I really would not. Nevertheless, fierce fighting will exhaust the enemy and perhaps in some foreseeable future will create the prerequisites for a successful strike, as I hope for another. Well, it's too early to talk about it. While there are battles in Verbovoya Rabotino, a heavy battle without serious advance in other directions, there is still a lull. Well, I would like to take this opportunity to comment on the figures that Ukrainian President Zelensky called yesterday about the losses of his own army, only 31,000 killed according to his data. Well, I already commented on this figure yesterday in my Telegram channel where I post it. There's much more information here than in my video review, so I'd encourage you to subscribe as I have before do so specifically on my Telegram channel so you can get all important information straight from there. 31,000 killed? Actually, that's not true at all. The losses are much higher. According to my information, the number killed is around 200,000. Counting them all is quite difficult because about half, if not the majority, of the deaths are recorded as missing. There's also a significant number of deaths from the other side. Their relatives don't file death certificates to avoid paying compensation. This way, virtually any number of casualties can be fabricated. Everyone was shocked by this number, even Kiev's Western partners. American publications, for example, wrote that they were also shocked. According to their data, the losses in Ukraine, I re-emphasize, according to American data, are much higher. Now, if we count all the irretrievable losses, including the missing and prisoners, then, based on my calculations, the number exceeds 3,000. Of course, Zelensky will never announce such a figure because his total mobilization is failing. According to the data coming from Ukraine, about half of those who are taken from the streets of Ukrainian cities still refuse, even despite being beaten.